Today, we are going to explore the common myths and undeniable truth about essential tremor. So get ready to separate the facts from the fiction. My name is Dr. Sayas. I am a neurologist specialized in movement disorders. Tip number one, essential tremor is the same as Parkinson's disease. This is not true at all. Even though Parkinson's disease might coexist with essential tremor in some patients, they are completely different diseases. Remember, patients might have different diseases at the same time. For example, a patient can have gout, and at the same time, they can have a breast cancer, and at the same time, Parkinson's disease. However, I have to say that when you have essential tremor, the probability of having tremor predominant Parkinson's disease increase. We'll know why. Let me show you how a patient with tremor predominant Parkinson's disease looks and compare with a patient with essential tremor, which is this one here. Let's start with the first video. So this is a, a lady with a right leg resting tremor, classic for Parkinson's disease. Okay, so when you see this type of tremor during resting, you see also the thumb tremor during resting. This is a classic Parkinsonian tremor, which is different from this one that you see here on your left. So this is a patient with an action tremor, predominantly action tremor, more pronounced on the right side, you see here, and also more pronounced during movements. So we call that kinetic, so finger to nose. You see how bad it gets at the end when he's reaching the target? That's a classic feature of essential tremor. Classic feature of essential tremor. So they look different. They are completely different diseases. Meet number two. Essential tremor can be cured. Unfortunately, this is not true. Be careful what information you get from the internet. Essential tremor has no cure. We don't cure patients with essential tremor with exercises, diet, supplements, or any type of medication. The main problem here is that we don't understand from where the oscillation is coming from in the brain. We don't know. In order to understand, in order to have a cure, you need to understand the pathophysiology behind this disease. And unfortunately, we don't know yet. We haven't get to that point in 2023. However, there are medications approved by FDA to treat essential tremor, not to cure essential tremor, to treat, to decrease the tremor, the amplitude of the tremor approximately 50 to 65%. I'm talking about propanolol and primidone. These are two medications approved by FDA with good level of evidence. The effectiveness of other medications such as gabapentin and topiramate off-label are lower. I typically don't use benzodiazepines such as alprazolam or clonazepam to treat essential tremor because I'm concerned about the side effect that I can cause in patients such as uh, worsening of the balance, more cognitive issues, um, drowsiness, and these side effects are more common when you get older. Very common to see patients not responding to other medication. And when this happens, the next step is to use a botulinum toxin injection. Botulinum toxin injection. I mean Botox, Xeomin, Disport. There are many uh, botulinum toxins that we can use. All of them are similar. The botulinum toxin decreased the amplitude of the tremor approximately 40 to 50%. And some patients even more than that. Um, but everything depends on who is injecting. And number two, uh, the complexity of the tremor. I have to say that the only type of treatment that I have seen decreasing the tremor significantly and improving your function significantly is deep brain stimulation. However, it's very important to be evaluated by a team specializing in deep brain stimulation. <clears throat> the team consists in a neurosurgeon, fellowship trained in functional neurosurgery. 
This is extremely important. And also you need to be evaluated by a movement disorder and doctor. Because the, the most important step is to have the correct diagnosis, otherwise nothing is going to work well. So, just to summarize, very important if you are thinking about deep brain stimulation, to be evaluated by a good team. It's a team. Uh, it's not just one doctor, one provider. It's, a, it's, a, it's many, many providers evaluating you at the same time and talking, talking about you to see if you are a good candidate or not. So the most important step, the most important factor uh, to have a good outcome is patient selection. Let me show you now what deep brain simulation can do for patients. So this is a patient with essential tremor. The first video that on your left, the deep brain simulation is off. So I will turn the DBS off and the video on your right the DVS will be on. So let's watch this. Okay, hands up. So you see the tremor, postural tremor, classic. Up now. For essential tremor. Uh, and then finger to nose, which is the kinetic tremor, is the predominant type of tremor. Uh, a very severe kinetic tremor, very characteristic for essential tremor. See, he, can, he barely can drink. The DBS is off now. Now, let's turn the DBS on. Turn this on now. And you see the difference. So it's on, you wait a few seconds. Now put your hands up. And basically the tremor went away, postural. Okay, this is seconds after turning the DBS on. And then finger to no significant improvement. And testing function, which is the most important thing, he now can drink. And believe me, he can even oh. write. Turn this on now. So this is very impressive. Number three, essential tremor is fatal. This is not true. Not even Parkinson's disease is fatal. However, a very severe action tremor, like in essential tremor, can affect your life significantly, your function significantly. Imagine that you have a tremor of 10 inches, 15 inches, even 20 inches. And, and like this, you cannot even eat, you cannot even write, you cannot even put a screwdriver on the wall. So that affect your function significantly. It's not going to kill you, but make your life very difficult when severe. Let me give you an example of what a patient with severe essential tremor looks like. So this is a patient who, um, who has a deep brain stimulation. You can see deep brain stimulation here. So uh, I'm going to turn the deep, deep brain stimulation off and this is how the patient looks. Okay. Very bad action tremor and, and also resting tremor too. Oh, now we'll turn the DBS on and in seconds. Okay. Right? Well, that's she gets significantly better. Actually, no tremors at all. Myth number four, essential tremor is rare. This is not true. Actually, essential tremor is the most common movement disorder after restless leg syndrome. The thing is that patients with essential tremor, many times the symptoms are so mild that they don't look for medical attention. So it's very common. Myth number five and the last one. Essential tremor is the same as enhanced or excessive physiologic tremor. This is not true. These are completely different type of tremors and with different mechanisms. The physiologic tremor is the normal tremor. Everybody has some type of tremors. That's why people shake uh, when they are nervous or when they take medications. Um, this type of tremors usually is higher frequency, low amplitude and pretty symmetric tremor. And they do not affect the head and they don't have the terminal tremor or the intentional component of the tremor, like in patient with essential tremor. 
I also want to say that enhanced or excessive physiologic tremor is completely different from functional tremors. The functional tremor is what we used to call before years ago, psychogenic tremor or conversion disorder. Uh, this type of tremor is very common, more common than what we think. And, and this is a diagnosis that is made based on uh, positive findings. So you need to find characteristic features of functional tremors, unique for functional tremors. So patients with functional tremor, the frequency changes drastically, the location of the tremor, the direction of the tremor change. This is not compatible with patients with organic tremor. So typically it's easy to differentiate when you are trained uh, to make the diagnosis. Otherwise, it can be very, very difficult. The good news is that patients with functional tremors, if you make the diagnosis early, the prognosis is pretty good. Um, the problem is when those patients get the diagnosis uh, after many years, it's more and more difficult. Um, and many patients, they have a, a relapse. And that's okay, that happened to you. If you think that you have a functional tremor or psychogenic tremor, make sure that you see a movement disorder expert to make the correct diagnosis and the appropriate treatment. The treatment for functional tremors are totally different. We don't treat patients with functional tremor with medications unless you have a severe anxiety disorder or severe depression like any other patient. But many patients, they don't have any psychological stressors at all, okay? So um, the treatment here is to train your brain to have the correct movement. And who is going to teach you that? A good physical therapist with experience in patients with functional neurological disorder. After that, when you are ready, uh, many patients require... Uh, um, psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is also part of the treatment for functional tremors. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon.